Dorinda has most of our budget numbers, but I'm going to talk to you just about the in whole numbers, not specific amounts that need to be adjusted. And um, we're talking about we're, we're talking about first of all amending this year's that's right. budget. Okay. This year's budget. So right now, given the workload, and um, we can talk some more about that in a minute. Um, we are on track to spend. We're going to talk mainly wages because the rest of our expenses are generally flat. Mileage went up a hair last year that probably related to the, also the mileage um, rate changes as well. So um, mileage, we're somewhere in the neighborhood of about $3,000 would be a budgeted. I think we were budgeted for $2,500. Last year we came in at $2,900 something. So it's possible that we could see closer to three, you know, this year. But we aren't traveling as much to as many um, trainings. We haven't this year so far. Um, and Eric and I have done a lot of things um, uh, as volunteers for the town. So there are plenty of times when we travel and do work when we don't even submit time or mileage, um, which is, again, we'll come back to that. So um, this year we're on track to wage-wise uh, come in around, at, I would say 27000 would be the cap. Now, I come 27,000 or 2,700? 27,000. Um, that works out to roughly, um, it's 15 hours a week uh, for one lister, eight hours a week for another lister, and three hours a week for the third lister. That third lister uh, typically only works 30, out, 30 weeks per year at most. And what's, what's in our budget now? 14,420. Wow. Yeah. That's for the budget that started July 1st. And that's everything that's mileage in that 14,000. No, that's no, just wages. 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 Oh, just wages. Just wages. And mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to wrap back for just a second to that point I made a minute ago about volunteerism and town work. Um, we have put in a lot of time in the last year and a half, two years since I came on board. Um, that hasn't gone on the payroll because we recognize that we want to, you know, live in an affordable place and also we want to, um, you know, none of us wants to see any of our taxes go up and that's of course what pays all the bills, right? Um, our tax revenue. So um, with that, we're kind of at a place where we've, we're pushing the wall. Um, there's enough going on in our own lives too that push has come to shove and really we need to be paid for the work that we're doing. Um, to give you just a quick example of how important our work is, I'm going to give you the two numbers for the last two years for the grand list. Um, we had more hours in last year than we did the before. So when I talk years, I'm talking lister years are um, certainly town fiscal years, right? So July to June. Um, but our years really run April 1st to March 31st for our right. list of work. Right. And so our heavy season, if you will, uh, similar to the road crew at times, um, really is from January through May. It's the early part of the year, the first five, six months, sometimes pushing into June. Right. right. And it, it has been a heavy load to push. Um, I came in in September of 17, um, originally on your appointment, and I appreciate that, um, and then was elected. I'm up for re-election this town meeting. Um, and um, in that two years, um, it came on the heels of the townwide reappraisal. Um, and in the two years, um, much of the work that's been done has been a lot of cleanup from the townwide reappraisal. Um, certainly, we had grievances even this past year that rolled in that people were coming in on the heels of reappraisal grievance. So they paid their taxes for two years on the assessed value from the reappraisal and didn't even realize, you know, that they should have grieved back then. But nonetheless, you can grieve any time. Well, you can grieve during the grievance period, but you can complain any time. Send us a letter. <laughs> we'll put it in the file. Contact you when it's time to have a hearing. But. Um, but there was a lot of cleanup required from that townwide reappraisal. Um, the reappraiser did a fairly good job across the town, but um, as with all sorts of mass appraisal 
God, there's a lot of tweaks and things in the system. So the first thing that I got sort of introduced by fire was to go in and clean up the system. So the first year and the second year that I've been here, a lot of the work that I've been doing has been focused on the grand list and our, what's called our CAMA program, which is where all the specs are for every parcel in town, um, all the buildings, et cetera. Um, but we're talking about this year, and we're still working on cleanup from the reappraisal, in addition to picking up all of the other things that we're responsible for, changes to properties, transfers, um, uh, and changes come in both directions. Sometimes they're, you know, things are becoming dilapidated and need to be sort of uh, property <coughs> assessment goes down somewhat based on the situation or <coughs> where people are making improvements um, and then there's increases in the assessed values. But regardless, every parcel that has change or transfer or a permit um, is a trigger for us to inspect, make sure that the parcel is accurately assessed and that um, that uh, it's got follow-up if in fact it's not complete, which a lot of our parcels in town are sitting at some incomplete uh, percentage. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot of work when I go one, two, three, but it's a lot of work. And there's a lot of towns out there, even towns that are smaller than ours, whose listers work every day of the week. Um, for many, many years, Middlesex has been blessed with Dick and Eric, who both have worked Wednesday morning solidly from 9 to noon, and then went out and did the um, assessments in the spring when the thaw hit or whatnot. Um, but that was in the days of paper lister cards and um, less technology back and forth with the state and multiple systems, etc. cetera. And uh, the reality is that, as with everything, it's changing. And mm -hmm. it's changing on the backs of the towns. Okay. Um, so I'm looking at my papers and thinking, wow, these fun numbers are probably on the TV. Um, so the gist is that we really, um, we really need to have somebody in the office more often, uh, not just three hours on a Wednesday. And that reality is that most often it's been me, um, who I am here several days a week, multiple hours across the week. Um, the times I gave you earlier, the hourly averages, 15, 8, and 3, um, those are averaged out across the year. So there's some weeks where it may be five, and there's some weeks where Heavier it may be 20. Yep. Right. And it, there were a couple of weeks last year during the inspections when mm -hmm. he and I both were in the neighborhood of 30, 40 hour weeks doing inspections to get it done. Um, but they're real numbers. Um, and I also and Eric both come from a background where we don't like to be running in what feels like um, a shortage situation, so never want to come in way over budget. <laughs> we would much prefer to be realistic about what the budget is. And when we realized where we're headed this year and next year, um, we really wanted to bring it to your attention so that we, the town could plan for it. Because, I mean, it's going to happen. It, the, okay. the work is necessary. Okay, so from, from the point of view of process, yeah. it has been our practice over the years not to amend our budget during the year and the reason for that is i believe to amend our budget we have to have a 10 vote. Oh, okay we can't amend the budget correct um i think what you're saying is that the voters approved a budget and if they and that was voted in march and to i mean we haven't had a situation like this before certainly we've had um, costs and overruns, right. like you know, ca cars have broken down. I think I haven't been able to research whether or not a payroll situation would change that. Well, our our practice has been that we don't. I mean, if all of a sudden we need to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on an emergency road repair, probably we would, Sorry. and have a townwide vote. Okay, but for something like this, we appreciate the information. We appreciate your service and your hard work, and it is what it is, just like the road crew. We have a flood. We have to spend a lot more money. It is what it is. The okay. budget the budget is a plan only, and we try and adhere to the budget, and we try and do the best job of planning we can do, okay. but stuff happens, and that certainly sounds like what's happened to you. So unless, yeah. unless other board members disagree, my point on 
this year's overage is Dorinda is now aware that that's going to happen. We're all aware it's going to happen and do what you have to do and, and get your job done. And we appreciate all the hard work you guys do. I mean, as you said, you're the rainmakers. Without you, we're nothing. We can't even turn the lights on. Right. Well, so. what he's meaning is bill what you're spending your time doing. Right. So we won't amend the budget, but if you submit that this is what you did, we're going to pay you for it. You Correct. Know, we'll have a shortage. So when when he says we don't amend the budget, that doesn't mean we're not going to pay you. Right. Sure. That you oh, no, no, no. Definitely not. Well, I mean, I heard that, under, and I'm under, like, okay. Well, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm, I'm saying, I'm saying do, what, do what you need to do, and we under we understand that your budget will be overspent. Okay. Right. Okay. Likely by a pretty good... Uh, like double. That's the way we've always handled it, but as the numbers get bigger... Bigger. Hey, listen, guys, well, communication, nice we communication is everything. We're you know, we're looking at those, Dorinda's surprised. looking at those numbers every week when she pays the bills. We're looking at those numbers when we get financial reports, and we pay attention to them. So when we know something's going on, then we understand what's causing the difference. Yep. That's fine. And if we have a problem or question, we're not shy. We'll call you up and ask you. Absolutely, but, sure. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm just saying there are all kinds of things that we manage in our budget process where, and, and certainly the road crew expenses, which are a huge percentage of our expenses, <clears throat> it's a guess. We don't know how many snowstorms we're gonna have. We don't know how many ice storms, floods, breakdowns, whatever else we're gonna have. So anyway, last year we had a okay. horrible year, but we didn't amend the budget. So okay. um, right, we appreciate thanks. the information right. um, and you know, keep it coming. Like, like if it looks like it's gonna change again, up or down, let us know. That'd be great to great, great. to know. Okay. Fantastic. So in terms of <clears throat> next year's budget, right. then that's a different thing. Then we're gonna, you know, incorporate that in our budget process and build it into the yeah. budget. Okay. And so to that end, we have given Dorinda our number for next year and we just drew a line of thirty and said let's keep it even. So we're guessing at the twenty seven for this year and um, we also again come from a position where we'd much rather have overshot and have money left over that didn't get spent, if you will, or isn't needed to be spent, um, than to, to come back and say, oh, Lord, here's where it's headed. Um, we just want you to be as close as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great. Yeah. Um, there's two, a couple of other things I want to make sure that we mention to you while we're here with you, um, also that relate to this. Um, the state, those gurus, PBR, are in the process of um, finishing up a contract and choice of a new grand list uh, software and provider, uh, which means, ah, I saw that, well, <laughs> everybody loves new technology, which is partly the reason why we sort of upped the next year, because the software that they're um, working on, that we've been working on, the grand list software, is uh, it's nigh on 20 years old. Um, and the state owns it, it doesn't get maintained very much, uh, it's very rudimentary. It's doing its job, you know, it's fine, but the state has decided it's time to get new. Um, and so when they do that, as with any transition from one system to another, uh, the expectation is on every town that all the information we have in our system is perfect, uh, whatever that means technology-wise, so that there can be a rollover into the new, you know, a migration into the new system that is more seamless. I hate these terms. It feels like corporate bingo, you know? Because <laughs> uh, those things never actually happen. But maybe, you know, knock wood, maybe it will. Um, and so we're really focusing on cleaning up and making sure things are organized. Um, with that, we will also, oh, so the date, the date that they're projecting, they had originally projected early 2021, so January 2021. Um, they're not thinking that's gonna happen. The testing is probably going to be in late 20 into 21, and they don't want to interfere with elections in 2020. So they have um, an option to extend the current contract with NIMRIC, that's the provider for the Grandless, and actually the Grandless software, as well as all the suites that we use for the rest of the bookkeeping and in-town office stuff, um, it, through 2022. Yep. And those are calendar years, those aren't fiscal years. So that's that's helpful to know we have a little more time because they've got a little more time and um, we don't really want to be sitting around waiting to the last minute so we're proactively staying on top of it so part of that is the computer 
part of it and is. Don't we have this, this will require a significant learning curve. The computer is another issue. But it's related. It we is have related. Yeah, but you got to have a proper computer to that's run right. the software before right. you can do the learning. Right. That's all I'm saying. Are we exactly. switching to the computer issue? Not quite yet, but yeah. he's he's he's. I'm jumping there. the gun. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. We know it's coming. Hours built into <laughs> that thirty thousand. Um. No. The well, thirty. Yeah. The thirty thousand is anticipating because again that's FY twenty one. It's anticipating the prep work that's going to get us to that migration point. Um. The te The state now and again. You can only project so far because they don't have their ducks in a row yet. Um, they don't even know which provider. They're still narrowing it down. Um, but once the state narrows it down more and has a more definite um, perspective on things, then we'll definitely share that with you. Keep you keep you um, right. abreast. But of when that. I put in this thirty thousand dollar number, if yep. you're, if he's saying this prep work is that's going to take place prior to so. Those numbers need to be in this budget someplace. So the state has talked a lot at meetings about support for the learning curve, et cetera, et cetera. So before we start planning hours of you know learning a new software system, et cetera, I want to hear first what they're talking about so that we can then, because we're going to be able to see demos of the new system, et cetera. And we're in the list to potentially be testers. Um, so we indicated that we would be interested as listers to test the software. There were quite a few towns um, who who have offered that. So I don't know that we would be chosen. But, but we're close to Mount Gilead. We yeah. are. And, um, and we have a really good, our town is growing and we're seeing all different types of change across town. So it's possible they could pick us. I, I don't know. Um, but until we have a little more information, I wouldn't want to bank that in there. That said, it could. It could potentially. Um, so, is it going to be something before January when we have to go to print with the budget? Before January of 21? 20. So 20. 20. This is. Oh, no, 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 no. No, not January 20. January yeah, 20. The, the real long. question is is any of this expense going to be in the 21 budget? That's right. The 21 budget, which right. is what we're asking. So the 21 budget is going to run from July of 20 through June of 21. Correct. Right. And my answer to that is probably not. And if it does, then we won't know for a couple more months. But we'll have a clue. We sure are supposed to get updates by the end of the year from PBR. So as soon as we have information, we'll definitely share it with you, especially if it lends itself to any numbers, money, you know, guessing. Right. Um, and the other thing I'll say, uh, again, Dick's not here, so, but speaking for at least for myself and Eric's here, um, we're pretty efficient uh, with the use of time, and um, we all have different strengths. So picking up different aspects of the software even, or, um, or the learning curve, if you will, it, the learning curve is going to vary depending on who it is. And so depending on the software, how heuristic it is and um, and it, it may be that it's easier for one or two of us than say for the third or for one versus the other two kind of thing we'll just have to see right um, but the but the, the balance to that is the other software that we have our camo software which is our where we pull our lister cards from and our um, all of the specifics about the property you know buildings etc land whatever um, we will realistically be looking at investing in a new CAMA system at that time. The CAMA system that we have is also antiquated and is tied into the old grand list software. Um, the same provider company that we have here, it's called Microsoft, um, makes a newer model that we could get as a standalone, but the state is only doing a contract and search for the grand list software. And part of where that gets confusing is there are actually two separate systems, the CAMA and the grand list, even though they talk and communicate to each other. So they also are expecting to have some potential suggestions to towns to choose from. Not every town in Vermont uses the same CAMA, but everybody mandated is mandated to use the same grand list software. Mm -hmm. the same trouble at Apex too. Right. So there's, um, so, and no idea at the moment cost, et cetera, but as we get closer, we'll be letting you know. We've got our ears down to the ground, and our, when we go to meetings and things, and there's vendors, we're really looking at the demos to see what makes sense. 
Um, I also heard that there was going to be a potential, a substantial increase for NEMRIC mm -hmm. support, I uh, believe it is. Mm -hmm. um, is that due to this? That's interesting. Um, I don't know, but... You haven't heard anything in regards to that? No. Um, but would you be getting the information, or would would uh, Sarah get it? I don't know. I don't know when we're gonna get that information. Do I, I don't. We were just looking on the budget yeah. when, where that came in. We don't right where it comes in. So but, but I didn't, I didn't know if this is what was creating yeah, that, that or. I don't know. You don't know. Okay. I yeah. Think. I don't well, know. I mean, all, all these all these software pieces have to work together. So right. obviously, right. there's going to be cost and set up and training associated with yeah but what he's saying is just for you're saying you heard that what we currently have is going to be more expensive right so maintain. I'm trying to figure out where this you know if it's going to be a budget increase for this coming budget that we're working on now mm -hmm. based on all these changes I would have, that are I would have thought you would get it because don't you use NEMIC programs in your work? Well, I mean, this is just like uh, scuttled out among town clerks, so it's oh. something yeah. that's... Oh, so you, nobody's received yeah. anything in writing, nobody's it's just rumors. Writing, no. Hey, there's all, there's just, you know, the, the general consensus is that, I mean, I don't know what ACS is going to cost us either, so we have... What's ACS? ACS is a recording system, what we do to record land records, hmm. but... Everybody, I think, I don't know if that's what the, what the concerns are, but we have, there's rumors that that's going to go up too as well. So we, everybody, it seems like the requirements are just, it's, it's like, a, it's a technical thing. Everybody wants better. Piece of the puzzle. <laughs> I don't know. I think Everyone wants more money to do the same right. thing. But I'm just wondering, you know, after hearing, I just wondered if this was the cause of that's driving all of this or whatever. Oh, I think, um, so they do a lot of different, um, it, so if we're talking about NIMRIC's hourly rate for support, for example, like you would call them up and say, I have a problem and I need help. Um, that, I mean, it could be that that's what's going up. I, we haven't heard anything. Uh, again, anytime we hear anything that's got dollar signs associated, we certainly report to you. Anything that's interesting, we'll report to you. Um, but uh, day to day, it's it's kind of speculative. I haven't seen anything announced. Um, you think the league would know? Nothing. Yeah, I don't think so. I just was wondering because, like you said, it's you know just rumored right now. But yeah. I wondered if you had heard anything about. I haven't. Um, and the, although the league is really helpful at the town level generally. Um, with regard to the Lister work, Vela is more the go-to. It's the What's Vela. They, it's the association of the Listers and assessors across the state. Oh, oh, association. I didn't even know there was. One. Um, and one. because I don't have enough to do already, I uh, said I would be a backup county um, county rep <laughs> for the Vela. Amy, board. you're glutton for punishment. I am. Do you um, work full time? Um, let's not talk about that right now. <laughs> so, um, but the respectfully. Um, but what that means is, it basically means not much, but I do have to go to a meeting um, on on the 13th, which I just found out about in Randolph, and I will ask this question when I'm there, um, right. because right. that's the, that is the forum where I might be able to get some real information. Um, so we'll, we'll stay tuned on that front. I want to hear what Eric has to say. He hasn't said a word. Eric wants a new computer like yesterday, and he's he's right about it, so I'll, I'll shut up. As far as the new computer goes, um, there was some talks that we were going to get a new computer several years ago, and we kind of postponed that. I'm pretty sure we brought this to the board's attention. At the time, that was sort of postponed because of the reappraisal. We didn't want to change computer systems during the reappraisal. The reappraisal was three years ago. We lost it. We, lost. we kind of really need our computer. Now, Even well, I thought, my, my memory is that there's money in this year's budget to buy the new listers' computers. I'm not right, Phil? I think you're right. So, no, that, that had been our time. I think we were desperate, but at least the listers. At point, but maybe no, we were talking about too. the listers specifically. Yeah, I thought so. We're, we lost it. Well, we had heard She's from voting, we had heard from Sarah and Dorinda at, at different points that the listers and the bookkeeper are like top of the That's list. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the um, but the and and both of those coincidentally are the issues are related. Um, the amount of um, 
I'm just going to say stuff uh, that comes as PDF and reports that are PDF. Neither of the two computers we're using have enough power to be able to, for example, run the grand list in a PDF format and run all the tax bills. They have to be run from Marika's computer. So it's, I mean, some silly kind of stupid tech things, but they're just not, um, they're, they're just, they're not, they don't have all the current memory, et cetera. You have a laptop or a desktop? We have a desktop, and the hope is that the new computer would be a laptop, and if need be, then we might be able to invest in like an, an external hard drive um, for additional memory or something. Um, because it is helpful to have the information in the field when we're out. We do not want a tablet. A lot of towns are all jazzed up about tablets and da 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 da. But really, what we need is a more a, yeah a simple um, notebook that we can carry out with. Us. So you you said you needed a second computer for this new camera system. Is that separate from the one you want now? The, so the, the camera system actually runs on the, I mean, they both, they're, it's software. software. Um, okay. Yeah, gotcha. it's, it's not software, software, right. Software. Just and, software. Right, and both computers would need to have enough power to run the gotcha. software. So the intent would be to um, have the new one, and we're going to need, you always need more power for new programs, it seems. Yeah. But we would want to keep, retain the one that we have now as a backup uh, so that we can be doing, um, we could both be working at once, but the power is, issue is more from my um, You know if your current computer is a Windows 7 computer, it I is. think it is. Yeah. So that's going to die in that's January gonna, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. We, saw, well, we, we have no choice. Well, yeah, well we could, I mean, that's why I was saying we could use it as a dummy terminal to go in and just make changes like, um, you no, know, it's going to accelerate. I'm telling you, the, the security is going to go right out the window because oh, the there are going to be no more yeah. patches. Oh, That's the issue. Oh, I see. So I don't think we can use it at all. I mean, we can use it as a boat Maybe we need to look for a two-for-one deal. <laughs> <laughs> so who orders um, a computer? So. Well, we'll I mean, we've got a lot of technology issues You're working you know, today cool. that will, and this kind of follows right along with that. But but I believe now you guys are at the head of the line for at least one, if not two. Minutes. Wow! And I thought that five, was five. I thought that was this year, which means before <laughs> June. And if it's in this year's budget, yeah, yeah, you should really try and do it between now and January because your computer is going to be a dead duck in January. Right. Well, and um, if that's the case, then we really need it ASAP because Correct. we can't we can't wait till January given our heavy season. Right. So we really need to have it up running and and, and get everything moved from this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, I'm, December, I'm, that's what I'm. That's what I. Yeah. December we, well, we start running reports. For we're the discussing. State, so, yeah. We're discussing computer issues tonight, so that okay. would be. How timely? Yeah. yeah. You're welcome to stay and listen to it. Um. So, uh, any other questions that you have for us? Because we primarily came to talk to you about money, but there is one other thing we kind of wanted to bug you about, and I also know that we're quick? over our time. Can you be quick? Um, Dorinda's going to uh, pull your ear about this too. Um, if not tonight, which probably not tonight, at some point soon, we need to really have a, a real heart-to-heart uh, -heart conversation about the tax bills and the, um, the charge, the uh, is it a fee, the penalty, the penalty for, the for late homestead filers. So people who file their homestead after the April deadline they have up until October 15th to file. But you can't file after October 15th. After that, the state will reject it. But for people who file after April up to the October, um, it makes a lot of extra work. And um, without going into great detail, um, it's a money suck. And so it, we may, you know, for whatever reason, most towns across the state leave the penalty in place. And, um, Dorinda can talk to you more about How much numbers. is the penalty? We waive it every year. 8%? I think. 8% of what? Yeah. Of the taxes. Yeah. Oh, for that property. So it's like late. When they first started the HS-122 thing, but yeah. that was years ago. Well, then there was then there was some kind of a transition, right, with the way they did the HS. Right. They because I remember, I remember, we made a decision to defer the penalty every until every everybody got up to speed in the new system. But certainly. Right. We're there now. And it oh, yeah. could be, 
it could be up to 8%. I'd have to go back. So you want us to do the penalty? I think it's up to the town needs yeah. it. I mean, frankly, yeah. a lot of these hours are literally, it's duplicative it's and what would the triple word be? It's re we, there it's are, regenerating. There are people bills. we send yeah. six tax bills to, of course. This, especially in Middlesex, because the non residential rate in this town is you know, lower. It's lower. lower. It's lower, yeah. Yeah. So is that who's mostly, well, wait, the homestead isn't available to non residential? No, but see, by, by not filing their HS-22s, they the they're considering, considered to be non-residential, which means they get the lower tax rate. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's the one where they'll do it on purpose. They sure they do. Okay, so what do you, what percent do you think do that? Well, most towns go with the eight. No, no, I'm no, talking no, about no, residents. No, no, how many people can we figure number. out what the What's dollar the amount amounted to? I think at one point. We well, I mean, what percentage of the people do not file their homestead at the right, correct time? It, it's actually, well, we ran, we ran some reports, and the, the, the bottom line is it's really hard to give you a perfect number, first of all. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be in a range. <laughs> and and the, the really honest, straight-up answer is it's way more people than you would think. And part of it is because people don't realize you have to file the HS 122. It mm -hmm. used to be optional. But a few years ago, the tax department said, if you're a resident and you live here, you have to file this form every, if, year. every year. And if somebody doesn't pay taxes, they don't file mm -hmm. a tax return, it never crosses right. their mind. And we have a lot of people like that in town. That wouldn't get a rebate. Who? And that's they why might. they don't even bother. They oh, could, they might they, even get it. Maybe they don't have income. Maybe they don't have any taxes to pay, and so they don't bother because it thinks it, income it's taxes. income taxes. Maybe right. they think it when it's not worth it. But actually, if they filed the HS-122 and they filed their income taxes with no income, they actually could wind up having their taxes paid through the through the homestead rebates. So those, the, it, it's a real catch-22. We have. We have at they, least. They had to pay the penalty once, that this problem would take care of itself the next year. Potentially. The penalty gets the people's attention. Do, do most towns so that when have. When do we have to decide that? It becomes, uh, it's part of the vote. Part of no, the town meeting day vote? The, the penalty okay. on the HS 122 is not part of the town meeting. No, no, I thought we had a warning on it. Oh, you, I, I thought, thought we, we did it we, separately. Oh, do you waive it? Here? You, you, I, I, so, I thought we waived it. Waive every it. spring, your, your philosophy in the past has been to not do it before uh, April 15th because that way, um, because yeah. that way people say, oh, if there's no penalty, screw it. I'll, you know, I'll just, I'll just file as a non resident, or and especially if I don't have to pay a whatever. So um, the what you have every year you have waived that penalty on the argument that it is unfair to the taxpayers, um, so, but that is your decision. The, what you're thinking of is the eight percent penalty that Dorinda can collect as the right. collector for late payment. That's, right. the okay, that's the warning. Okay, that's the warning. So it's the other that one that this is the other one. Choose. Is that one and a half percent? I think so. I thought it was up to eight. Well, in, we can double check the percentage. That's, that's in fine. a town where the homestead rate is lower, is higher than the non-residential, you may in, in, impose a penalty of up to eight percent. The, the select eight. board may be eight three percent. If it is the vice of, if, if it's reversed, the select board may only charge three percent. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay, so we can go up to eight percent. Is that right? You saying? cannot. You cannot. There's no wiggle room in between. You have to pick. It's oh. either one or the other. You can't say five. Because one year you were thinking of doing that. Oh, okay. So you have to do the full eight. It's not like a range. No. And it's actually programmed into the grand list, so we can see what we didn't collect by waiving. But you don't know how much we've lost in terms of revenue. Um, I could give you a quick number that would be a ballpark, um, just on a handful of cases that we know for sure. So if yeah, you want to wait a second. Time, yeah. Look it up. She's going to give us all the big ones. <laughs> well, I, I agree with that. I mean, our, our idea of waiving it was to get people used to the new system when the transition happened. Yeah. The transition, actually, it was only two years where the right. state didn't. Right. Yeah. So yeah. It, sort of, it sort of goes to a little bit longer conversation, which I, I will nutshell. Um, before we launched the grand list this year, Sarah and Sarah helped me uh, do a scrub of our entire grand list to make sure that we had 
people listed as residents or not so that we could notify the state of who was not, who is a resident but is not filing the HS-122. In most towns, it's, it's the other way around. People claim homestead so they can get the rebate and they don't really live there. Um, but in our town and something like 60 others, we're the wrong way around. So after looking at the grand list, the, you guys had just finished the checklist. You just cleaned up the checklist. Um, we came up with a list of 43 property owners in town who we were 100% sure live here year round. And we notified the state that we were flipping those people manually, which it was a bit of a act of civil disobedience. The tax mm. department does not like that. Um, and, um, and so the agreement was we would leave it until the end of the year and anyone who hasn't filed the HS-122 by the end of the year, we have to flip them back to non-res. Um, this is agreement with the tax department. But in the meantime, it gave us an opportunity to see who responded and who didn't when they got their tax bills. Because what happens is people who do expect the rebates, the prebates, or whatever you want to call them, um, would realize they'd get their bill and they'd be like, wait a minute, I don't know $10,000, I always pay six, you know, or five, and what happened? So we've had quite a few people who realize that and have changed it over. But it's from that list that I'm going to give you the number, um, roughly the penalty number. So the penalty number is over $6,000. So if on those 43 properties, if we had assessed the penalty, um, we would have recouped about $6,700. Which Good is... Good portion of the increase in listers' wages. That's exactly. what we thought. Right there. <laughs> um, and it has since come to light that in addition to these 43, we had... So to answer your question, Mary, there have been quite a few other people who have been late homestead filers that we didn't catch in our checklist and resident, resident, no, you know, uh, the scrub we did. Um, and so there are other people who, there are additional people, probably and about 15. And wouldn't their tax bill be higher, Amy, because they would Only if they were eligible for the rebate. So, right, so the... Non the non-resident is lower. The non-residential rate is lower here in town. Right, so they're filing non-residential. Right, and if they file non-resident, and they're doing it on the basis that they um, don't know or they don't, they don't yeah, have income expect tax, they're, they are missing out potentially right. on getting that rebate yeah. um, through the homestead. But if otherwise, we do know what we believe. We have some pretty solid um, folks who regularly claim. Because they wouldn't get a rebate in the first place. Non-resident to, right. non to get the lower rate. The right, rate. so my question is, yeah. wouldn't, I mean, how, what is the difference between what they would are paying now and what they would be paying? Well, I mean, it's the difference between the, the residential and the non-residential. Yeah, rate. and so depends. I mean, if these are wealthy the people, person. and yeah, yeah they, it could be thousands of dollars there right. too. Absolutely. Yeah. Correct. Yep. That's yeah. Right. I mean, my guess is that there's probably. I mean, maybe. I mean, you 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 would know this that you you could probably tell. You know that the people who are doing it that have no income are probably. Older people who just not necessarily you'd be you'd be surprised. So it's not the retired not people living on like social security only. No, it's a it's it's your average range across middle sex. Can I just clarify something mm, for the so. minutes? So when you're saying that the penalty is over six thousand, you've assessed eight eight percent on the on the taxes or so the grand list actually calculates okay, okay. automatically and then it gets waived in our system. I see, we okay. can see what was waived. All right, that, and that what would something. would have been waived is just shy of sixty seven hundred. Okay. So, and that's just with the 43, and then that's there are right. 15 additional. Right, there were 15 others. So I want to make one really solid clarification here. So our grand list value is our grand list value. That doesn't change. Where this is a really key point in our town is one of equity. Because when you have people who should be paying a residential rate, it affects all of the others of us who are residents in town yep. And our rates go up. What we pay in then is higher. Um, so it's really a neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor unfairness issue. Mm -hmm. And um, and so the penalty is actual revenues that would come in, but uh, if they get collected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but the idea of does it mean more money in the pot overall? 
No, it's just a more balanced. Right. Amy, uh, <laughs> I'm we're sorry. Done. We're done. That was we're, it. <laughs> okay. I, what would be what would be really helpful for me, and it sounds like we're going to be getting together again, is I have asked and asked and asked the state and the League of Cities and Towns to explain to me why our rates have flip-flopped. And I can't get a straight answer from any of them. They I just... We got an explanation. Yeah, you got an explanation got an, for it. We got an explanation on it. Mm -hmm. Did it make sense to you? Huh? Yeah. Well, whether it makes sense or not. <laughs> well, but, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. I mean, they, they tell me what it is, but, I, but, right, but how do we fix it's it? It's their calculation. It's got nothing to do with yeah, us. And you said we, can't, we can't, we can't, you can't, can't fix, fix it. it. It's it 60 do with towns that are in this per pupil spending, spending yeah. and mm -hmm. how much above the per right. pupil spending you are. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's all right. calculation. And it's all less I love it when they say, oh, it's just it's just in the formula. We can't change it, and you can't do anything about it. Well, we can amend the school fund. Financing law or do something. Well, I mean, it, it is I worth noting that it, it is absolutely tied to the school part of right. the taxes. Right. So it is not the municipal side. Right. Our municipal side, this is one of the lowest it's, towns in our area. I'm We've done, I mean, you guys have done well. Um, and, um, you know, there are more expenses on the table, so our budgets are going to have to go up eventually. Um, but in the meantime, you know, from a municipal side it's a pretty affordable place to live um, and, and policing this also is has a lot to do with driving uh, the time that we have to put in here up I mean this isn't assessing work no this is extra work that the state's mm -hmm. dumping for, oh I, I get it yeah, yeah. thank you for this doing that because I know we've talked about this we for a while yeah. Yeah. right we're but mandated yeah, there's a so. big controversy across the state as to whether or not the list is going to be the HS122 police mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. state or not and basically it looks like we are we are I mean, by we default. are yeah right hmm. right hmm. And well thanks year, guys thanks, very helpful. thanks for all your hard very work very helpful thank you very okay. much can you I know? ask if we put Paul yeah yeah oh yeah ahead Yes. Sure. Thank as long you. as everybody agrees. Yeah. Is that You're all right? okay with yeah. that, Dorinda? Yeah, I was going to suggest that Paul right. go. Well, and also, oh, yeah. aren't you on the floor for the next one? Oh, yeah, sort of. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's fine. Yeah. yeah. You did just order pizza? No, if you do. No. Then they'll be all right, but we're cool. So you're on. Oh, you're on. You're on. Um, Congratulations. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Great news. Uh, wow, we that. have a grant writing yeah. road commission. New career for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, see, I, what I was going to say is now the problem is you're expected to do that. Well, I always do. I always have. Well, you're expected to make sure you oh, to get, get them. To get them. Yeah, that's that's always the catch. Um, let's just go over the, the town garage stuff quickly. Um, I did it, the DeWolf report. Right. Did, did everybody get a chance to read that? I, I think everybody did. Okay, good. Mary, you read it as well. Um, and I, I have not had a chance to follow up with Nicole. Um, I still owe her a phone call, but as we all know, the gist of it is basically that we would not be able to put insulation in the garage to hold snow sufficiently. So that, she, they did say structurally it's fine, you know, and, and we knew that anyway. Um, it's just a bummer that. Structurally it's fine as long as we have a heat loss. Correct. As long as we okay. keep we bringing we snow. the snow, as long the as we melt the, the snow same, the way we are. It was the same issue, if, and I can't remember the which school? which improvement it was at the school, but I think right. it was the one before the last one where they were adding insulation to the school, and they had to put additional structure in the roof because yeah. the roof was designed to melt the snow. Yeah. Right. I remember that. Yeah. So, so that's where we're at with that. Now, just just to be clear, though, we could correct that by adding additional structure. You could. You could. Might be more expensive than building a new building, <laughs> well, but we could build it. You mean like yeah. putting in extra beams and Correct. Yeah. And yeah. the problem is it'll only make the building smaller inside. Is there an attic? By doing that. No. It's open. It's open. Yeah. Sure. So it's just yeah. blow some stuff yeah. in the attic. Yeah. 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 No, I wish it. Yeah. Okay. It all relates to holding capacity. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. But the building's structurally good, in good shape. Um, so other than that, um, going over the five-year road plan, I don't know if everyone has had a, a chance to look at it. Not. Steve and I have have altered the first, but basically this this coming season and then the following, um, and then thereafter kind of reflects what's already listed. And all we've done is is basically just update it to to the delays and setbacks that we've kind of endured. Um, 
this this past season, um, and and more or less restructuring so that the the worst roads will will get that attention the soonest. Um, things what does full service mean versus service work versus service work and mitigation? So that. we have yeah oh, there we sorry. go yep I'm sorry. just a little breakdown that we always put in the town town book. Um, and and this this may not be finalized as of yet as as Steve and I go through and and work on our budget we may be trying to may propose some things that may change us a little bit in regards to what what we might try next year to to kind of get us back up to snuff where we'd really like to be we're just at the point with all the damage we've had we're falling behind so far that it, it, it'll only progressively get worse as far as you know damage and in the infrastructure and things like that so I won't get into that tonight just because we're yep. we need factual numbers to help back that up so <clears throat> but any questions I'm happy to take them uh, in that regard are you going to do any special projects on, like you did for the three worst mud areas? We will. We will. And that, that's going to be on. They'll be smaller just budget-wise. What we're running into, um, because of the way the state is requiring just this, this heightened amount of uh, you know, water runoff, it's, it's costing us a lot more to do the same work we've always done. Just because they've they've raised the level of uh, of I would, I'd call it quality control of what they're expecting us to do. So is that why you went around and did all that cutting in the last couple? Of weeks? No, that's that's more for safety and sight lines, brush. I mean, we've had complaint. There, there's no happy medium. They complain about the brush, then we complain that we're cutting. <laughs> it's, too much. Yeah, it, yeah to, you know, it's it's a double-edged sword. At yeah. the end of the day, it is a safety issue. It really, really is. So. We were able to capitalize on that this last time, um, but in regards to you know the, what it's costing us, just just like McCullough Road, it's a steep road. They're they're requiring anything over a seven percent to be stone lined completely. I mean that's eighty five percent of McCullough Road. Whoa! Yeah, stone line meaning the ditches. The ditches. The ditches. Wow. wow. The ditches. That's expensive. Yeah. It's yeah. and it's time consuming. It's not only expensive; it's very time consuming. Yeah. Um, the hydro cedar has been phenomenal that we bought. That has that has saved us a lot of time. Wait a and second, it's, what's our hydro cedar? It, it we go through and hydro seed actually broadcast right. seed using okay. water with using mulch. water with mulch and everything. Uh, and one, and it, one, one, one step, one, one, one step. Yep. The way we used to do. And it works quick, and, and it germinates quickly. So that that's been a huge improvement. That's helped us out a lot. Um, but again, the stone lining is just, it's, it's expensive and it's time consuming. So we'll, we'll be back up the next meeting to, to kind of to go over our budget and, and we'll have more in-depth detail of, of what we'd like to propose to see for this next I'm sorry, meeting. you said it was a grade of road, like a seven. percentage of slope. A percentage of slope. A percentage of slope that slope. requires the, so that's why I've seen this say. everywhere and that's all, all over the place. Yeah, I've yeah. seen it everywhere. And I'm but like, I why mean, are they doing if this? it's less than 7%, you okay. only have to do it like every 20 feet or Just the check dams and then check anything dams, below, yeah, okay. the five, uh, below the 5% or 3%, then, then it can just be grass. Yeah. They, they've got requirements for, and then the type of rock based on the slope percentage and all of that. When did that all go into it? That, that's what the... That's, the, all, the, that's all part of this water quality. Water quality, yeah. The but MR, is it also MRGB helping with, like, you know, these massive storms? Is it, it actually... Uh, it's not helping with the massive storms because the, no matter what, you're, you're going to get... Your, our infrastructure is not built to handle three inches of water overnight. Nobody yeah. that, nothing is. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, what it is helping is is the the more frequent smaller storms, yeah. you know, medium sized storms. It is helping with that, but it's uh, it's on the cost of us. Yeah. You know, it's 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 trick. It's a trickle down. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, we're we're doing the same amount of work, just less output is being shown. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, and, and, it's, and it's costly, and it is. It's very it's, costly. It's kind of like what we just heard from the from the yeah. Uh, the workload remains. No good yeah. news. So I, just going back to this, yeah. I have a question. So um, I understand about the roof. Yeah. Probably going to be prohibitive for what we would gain by adding insulation to the roof. Yeah. We can gain something by adding insulation to the walls. I don't Did know they, how much. 
Well, they, I asked her. She said, we don't even focus on that because if you don't, all that rises. heat essentially rises. So all you're doing is pushing up. Because uh, I did ask. I said, well, what about the walls? She's like, well, it's you're, all you're doing is pushing the heat higher quicker. So. How about a fan? We've got... <laughs> Yeah, well, there we go. Push it down. Push it down. <laughs> the, fan, the fan pushing it back down. Yeah. So, that's uh, a bad just, idea. just one other, I'm, I'm sorry, but just yeah, one no, other question while we're before. So, what is the heating system in there now? Two Modine heaters, liquid What's a Modine? propane. Uh, it's just a, a, it's a ceiling mounted uh, propane burner. Flames come up, heat the heat exchangers, and, and a fan blows the heat so, out. Yeah. But you never get it to go down. It's already starting high. As well, they they have they, they have they're angled down. Push it down. Yeah, they're push it down. down. This is to keep you guys warm. That's and, to keep uh, the shop warm. The shop warm That's the shop warm. The warm. Trucks warm. Well, I'm just wondering, like, if you guys are truck. working yeah, we, yeah, there, the go, like, we don't care yeah. about the people. Yeah. Just the yeah. Trucks. I mean, we set it at 60. If you set it more than 65, you can't you can't work in there because you know it's winter time, so it's it becomes hot. Yeah. But there's a lot of humidity. You know, if you bring the trucks in that are 10 degrees. And they sweat all night. I mean, the purlins drip. You know, that's that's part of it. What's so, how old, the, are those, how old are those? How old are those motors? I original? don't know that. They used to be oil. I I've been told, and there was waste oil burning furnaces at one point. These were here since I've been here in '09. I don't know. Waste that. oil? That's bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. Well, it isn't. It isn't. They've improved the. They've, well, they've improved, improved the waste yeah. oil. Things, it's not. It's it's only using it for the firing purposes. You know, it's not. It's not injecting. The, but, uh, but but my question is, at some point, to have somebody come in and look at those because they have made major efficiency improvements. Yep. In all those things, and the other thing that I've seen in a lot of commercial garages is um, air to air right. heat exchangers to blow all that moisture out, right. but recapture. Yep. Recapture the air. Um, I've only seen it on new stuff. I don't know about retrofitting on a building that's not. I don't know. So I don't, I don't know insulated. either. But I'm, but I'm just saying there's right. a couple of things where maybe we could improve right. our energy situation and right. also just the habitability of the sure of the building. Right. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I mean, I at least wanted... we know we know that part. So, and yeah. that was the big part of our yeah. discussion with with the building fund, basically. You know, is okay. Is is it even feasible? Which which basically it is not. Yeah. You know, so we go from there. Um, but that's at a that's definitely a later discussion. But we'll be back next meeting to talk about budget stuff. Okay. So hopefully, uh, who's who's giving us the good news on the trucks? Oh my God! Go. Don't even go there. <laughs> He's got kids. He's got to go. Yeah, I've got to go. This like yeah. dinner time. It's six o'clock. They've been here for an hour. Those poor kids. Uh, all right, all right. Kids we, know, we know who's going to give us. We know who's going to give us the update. Thank you. Go ahead. No, I, I'm happy to be here with it. I just want to roll off that table. Oh, Nevada! Is it going to be here? So, listen up, everybody. We've had. We've. We're. We're in the middle of some pretty, pretty bad truck troubles. One of the trucks is, is going to need a motor indefinitely. Um, Steve has been dealing with them in regards to time and cost and things like that. We don't have a definite cost, but we've been told in the ballpark of forty to fifty thousand. Well, the new motor is fifty-one thousand. So, so, that's that. Well, the truck is that? Yeah, so there yeah, goes the truck. Truck. Yeah. Yeah. That That's the two thousand fourteen <laughs> Western Star. Western Star. Uh, yeah. Is this the Ted Wheeler? One of them. One of them. One of them. This is the one that just had the transmission. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, wow. what, just again, just quickly, why Paul's still here. So, Paul and Steve are trying to look at all options. Like, we put a new rear end in that truck at great expense. Now we're putting in a new engine at great expense for a truck that we're going to use for two more years. That's our plan. Um, the question I asked, does it make sense to say, because what's going to happen next is going to be the transmission. There's it's actually backwards. Yeah. We already we already got back. Already no, I'm sorry. sorry. That's okay. It's the rear end. Regardless. Anyway, anyway there, there's, more that, there's more that can go wrong with that truck and probably will, based on our experience. So we're just trying to look, you know, could, does it, could, could we possibly get a, get a good used motor and put it in their engine? 
who the hell knows? But just just a heads up, we had we had a few days of glory where we uh, where we got that grant, which was glorious. But it looks like we're we're going to spend it. Or How spend come a we good hear about of all of that on email, and then we don't hear about this bad news <laughs> until we get here? Well, the bad news is. Recent. Well, we, just, that's very just recent. Coming. That's just—I mean—a lot of it is happening daily. That we yep. we just got most of this today. And so. the scary and the scary part is, of course, snow is scheduled for Thursday, and our one of our other trucks is up there for warranty work. So we have one truck in the pickup. On on the, the moment. In that regard, I I did demand that one of the used trucks that have been traded in up there be full of fuel tomorrow and ready to come down here to be put in the service. I told them, I said, it's unacceptable with the time it took us to get it looked at and we're, we're down. So if, if there's any salvi, you know, any... The truck's been there five weeks. It's been there for five weeks. If there's any severing business going forward, there, there, there needs to be a, a truck available. And, and who, who are we yeah, dealing with? Charlie Boys. Charlie Boys. Charlie Boys. Five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they've, they've always been a reputable. But well, Steve and I have happened. talked. It just seems like they've they've gotten the point to the point with towns that they're they're soaking the full the full they, boat to towns. They, they, they're, there's just like an. Well, they're not seems giving like us the service either. They're not, and we're not getting the service, which was normally never the case. That we seem to have been high priority. And, something's and yeah, yeah. something's wrong. But anyway, I, I'm I'm looking into that some, and like I talked with the guy down there at Grandfield last year, we replaced an engine in our freight liner, and it was like 31 grand. So that's Who's do that? I was kind of expecting maybe yeah. 35, -ish, but that's, kind of a big difference. that's a yeah. big difference. That's a big difference. Yeah. So anyway. I think I no like that idea of a used one. Most you know, no. If we can get that, one, that's one. No? The reason you don't that's think so? We're all worried about how we're oh, look who it is! Yes, it's children. I didn't realize hey. the kids were here. That's why I was sad. They Paul, we're all sad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're being Thank so you. good. So, anyways, we'll we'll see you guys next meeting, and I I promise to bring not nearly good news <laughs> anyway. So. So where's your third one? I believe with their grandmother. Okay. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping with their grandmother. Thank you for pushing in your chair. I really appreciate it. Isn't that what you're supposed to do? It is. Yeah, okay. You are, good, good. You are a good boy. <laughs> wow, these kids are getting really big. All right, guys. Have a good Bye. night. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Paul. Paul leads a million. Oh. You're suddenly, right. <laughs> suddenly, I just have to get Mr. Yeah. Yeah. Take in, a deep breath. In, in shock. He's yeah. still in yeah. shock. <laughs> um, yeah, the, um, let's see, I maybe step back. So, uh, Peter and I met with a couple of representatives from Tech Group who were located up in uh, South Burlington, and uh, they had dropped off some materials to Sarah and I ended up having a conversation with them. I think more or less motivated by um, us continuing to think about the support that we get and how much it costs from RV Technologies and um, whether or not that was the best way for us to continue to go. Um, anyway, I thought we had a good meeting. Uh, this guy David, who actually uh, is the director of uh, Cloud Computing Services, was the one who really I think did, yeah, uh, most of the presentation and, and uh, answered our questions. Uh, and he, he seemed good. He seemed really knowledgeable. They work with a lot of towns and schools, so they're, they're much more familiar with municipalities and the needs of municipalities, I think, than, than RB is. Um, so they're really kind of a, a little bit of a different business model. Um, they're familiar with Nemric. Uh, which, of course, is important to us. So, you know, again, we had some conversation with them, and we did ask them to give us a price. This is their security and network assessment, which may, in fact, be kind of redundant because I, I, I have a feeling, I don't know because I haven't looked at the system, but I have a feeling that our network uh, and security are good. I think that that's something that RB is good at. But we don't know. You know, we're basically taking. Trusting, yeah. yeah, you know, don't work. The other thing was, I, I um, 
I, I found we wanted to kind of um, see what this company does, how responsive, what kind of information we get back from them, um, to see if it's worth looking at um, a, a more holistic kind of approach, much like we have with RB. I thought it was interesting is, you know, um, given the opportunity, most companies would go, oh, we can do it all for you. And it, it really, they didn't jump to that. They were like, we can, I mean, you know, if you're happy with certain aspects of RV tech, that's good. I mean, we can jump in and fill something else. It wasn't like they were making a push for the whole thing, which kind of at least uh, impressed me. Um, and I think the 2000 is probably not a bad price. Um, I suspect it. You know, doing this kind of assessment work with RB would be um, more. certainly more expensive, um, but it, you know it's hard to it's hard to gauge. Anyway, that's you know where we're at. It just seems like this year, um, and I think this comes down to now that you know the timing and hearing from the listers in a year where we you know deficit spent uh, <laughs> or last year, but going into it and just looking at cost, uh, whether or not. It's the right time for us to do something like this. Um, Can you I'm, get recommendations from people that they work with? I haven't yet, but I yeah, yeah. Uh, I could. I mean, my my only fear is, and this happens with like any time you get a quote for something, when you take the lower one, there's always some sort of like, oh, we weren't anticipating this, and so you know, just I I mean, I don't know if this is a realistic amount or is this sort yeah. of their well, teaser. We don't, even know what, we don't even know what our so the other, the them. other issue, which isn't really in this, but was certainly part of our discussion, was the email solution. Yeah. Yeah. As, as, you, as you'll recall, RB has proposed what sounded to Phil and I like an unbelievably yes. expensive email system, and we've been, we've been flibber-flabbering around with that for about six months trying to figure out what to do. These guys have some very clear and defined ideas of how we can do that for a lot less money. But that's and, not and that it. really no, is no, no. That isn't included in this. But if if we're going to do this, I want to make sure that in this is an analysis of our email and a recommendation of how to. Oh yeah, we could ask. Them. Yeah. So what are they yeah. actually really doing here? Assessing our network and security? Yes. And, and does this have to be done? No. No, this is something no. because we don't know what right. RMB is. Right. I just we, meant for, instance, for them to want to take us on, do no. they no. require that? We, so. for instance, we, for instance, could say to them, "What well, we're interested in you guys doing as a as a first go at this is setting up our email system, yeah, and and getting that up and running." And when I was thinking about this, I had not seen this until tonight. Yeah, but you know. Two thousand dollars. There's the cost of a damn good Lister's computer. Yep. Maybe, maybe two of them. Yeah. Um, I don't think we're in bad. I agree with you. I, I, I do trust Ruben to yep. keep an eye on the security stuff, and that's okay. Right. We've had some issues with the billing, but you know, my real thing now is that a we need to make a decision on the Lister's computer and implement that, and it sounds like we need to do it in the next. It, get it in here in the next thirty days. It does. And b get our email up and running so we have town email and we're no longer using our personal emails. Right. right. So, I, you know, when I read this, I, I love these guys when they send you this stuff. Base time, base, one time baseline vulnerability scan, review cloud application, email, data. I mean, I, I, a lot of that, I don't even know what that means. Yeah, right. me I'll have my husband look at it. He'll tell us what oh, it's worth. Oh, good, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, great idea. But I, I don't doubt that it takes a lot of time to do yeah. this, and I don't doubt that it's worth $2,000. The, the And I, I hear you sort of asking the same question. Yeah. A, is this the right time? And B, do we have other more urgent needs, which I think the answer That's is we do. I'm, yeah, I mean, especially now after hearing the truck thing. Um, <laughs> And on top of the list, or so it's like, you know, <laughs> you're going, oh, it's like, <laughs> it. where do you want to spend the money, you know? Yeah, I mean, so what do we think our... We don't we, want to spend the money, but we What do we it. think our budget increase is going to be this year? Ten percent? Forget about two percent. Um, anyway, anyway yeah. um, I, I guess, and we're, we're way behind, and I apologize for that, but my suggestion would be to ask them for a recommendation to solve our email problem as a way to start this process. Okay. Because that's an urgent need. And then the question is... And then not worrying about this. For the time being. For yeah. the time being, anyway. Yeah. yeah, I think so. And then, and then, probably, I guess, go to RB for the Lister's computer. 
I don't know. Well, I don't know. I, don't I, know was, I, I mean, we, we, we got to. We need to make a decision. We, we got him. These guys um, like Dell. I remember him saying. And I have, um, for years, I've had you know business account uh, with Dell where I can go in and inspect stuff. So you know we don't have to rely on necessarily somebody else. I mean, you know, I I can do that. We can inspect the computer. We want a business group, not just a, uh, but probably two. Business class computers, right? Um, and we want, you know, all the all the current software. And as she said, it's got to have a lot of memory. It's got to have a lot of hard drive space. Um, so, you know, I can look at some of that stuff and spec it out, and we can decide, you know, and do that ourselves. Without do you think Dell is what we should be getting? Probably. Yeah. Um, I'm I mean, fine with I mean, Dell. I've yeah. I've always, you know, liked it. We put a lot of it in schools. Um, you know, the service has been there. But if um, we, if we, so we buy the computer from Dell. Mm -hmm. Who does all the transfer of the software? Up, these guys. Let's okay. See. Let's try. Let's try. Try them out with something. Okay. Okay. I'm fine with that. So did you guys just make a decision on that? You said you wanted to get them to install the Lister's computers. Is yeah. that what you just said? Yeah. And so, what I was trying to look while I was listening to something else to remember. What do we have in this? And also, we want to get an estimate from them on what it would cost to for set hardware. up the emails. Yeah, I've, that I've got. Okay. Yeah. We but only have computer maintenance as a budgeted item. Really? We didn't. We didn't do any hardware. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, for the listers? No, not even for the for listers. The, no, for not for anything. Um, no maintenance. We what put we it under just computer maintenance. Probably. If that covers everything. Yes. So you would ask what them for an, ask for a bit, uh, okay. an, an estimate of putting in the listers' uh, computers, that's what you're saying? Ask, I'm sure. uh, He's going to do the specs, uh, and then we're going to... You're He's going to have them install. I'll, I'll do the specs online through you do the specs. Dell's portal, you see what it's going to cost. And, and then and then we'll get them and then get and they'll and they'll and do the we'll installation and, and, and transfer the data. Yeah, so we're going to spend all that. So we're we're going to get an estimate on that. World. Okay, yeah. we're going to get an estimate on that for that scenario. Can I just ask? Oh, sorry, go ahead. One of the things that when I was talking to Amy earlier, I think, and I might have been out there when she talked further about the computers, but she said, like, one computer, and then they were going to keep their old one and yeah. use it as She can't this. because it's going to be... She what? can't. Okay. Well, he says it's going to not work Windows after January. Yeah, Windows, Windows 7, 7, 7 support, so you can't... Right. Well, it's no support. It'll right. work, but there's no support. Yeah, but no right. security it's patches, no right. real no, volume. You don't want that. Right. Right. And I think... It's not worth okay. it for us to. So, not to throw a wrench in the. But what's going to happen with the accounting computer? Do we know where that one sits? Patty's? Probably needs to be replaced, too. Yeah. I mean, I, that's working. I don't know what that laptop is, if it says on it or not. Or you can. But that's. You know, right. that's going to be the issue with the uh, listers. I wouldn't be it's surprised. A, it's, a, it's a Windows 7 ThinkPad, so yeah. I don't know how old that yeah. is. Yeah. So you've got issues all, yeah. all the way Yeah, around. we do. Well, we knew we were running up against this wall. So you're not really talking two computers. Probably you're talking, talking three. Three? three? For the Possibly. listers? No. 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 One for Patty. We, this accounting computer, if it's no but good But the listers the needed or, two computers? Yeah. Well, they... Well, they said they could do one, and then the second one is they kind of wanted something a, for their cam system. Well, they they go, what, what is it? What does a business laptop cost these days? Fifteen hundred bucks? Not even. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Well, depending on what you got. Yeah. Nine to Nine, twelve. Any, well, yeah, anywhere in that range, probably depending on how much memory, how much uh, hard drive space. Uh, hard drive space is cheap. She wanted one that was. Um, a portable with an external drive, so she had more capacity. That's what she said she wanted. Yeah, um, although if we can get it built in, it, it's just simpler Better. to have it built in as opposed to have another thing right. uh, hanging another over from cord, it. Yeah, yeah, to carry right. around. Um, but, l l you know, it won't take me long. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look within the next couple of days, maybe. Just well, it sounds to me like we need, we need to get this in the works ASAP. I think so. Yeah. From, from what she's saying, and yes. I didn't realize the timelines with the changeover with the state, and you well, know, with, we the, with those systems that they're on. Yeah. Well, that, yeah. Uh, all of I hadn't heard of any of that yeah. yet. No. So, so what's what's your 
You have a town computer too, right? I have the laptop, which again is, which one did you, did you look at mine okay, or did you look at Patty's? Oh. This one that's open is the one that belongs to the town. This is, the, this is my portable one that I bring back. Me too. This oh. Is the, so this is also a oh. Okay. <laughs> I'm going this fast. Uh, this has been a, this has really been a weird day when, when you spend, when you're at 7.30 yeah. to 2 o'clock sitting at yeah, for you, it's Vermont it's Tire. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there was a. I had to get it. Dorinda's is a seven. Do you so, really, I don't know if it's necessary. I mean. Well, one of the things that the, the, the guys from tech, tech Group said to us is that in some cases, depending upon what you're running for applications, they can install Windows 10. And I think what they're doing is it's not like a full yeah. install, it's a stripped down install. Um, you know, to make the machine last a little longer. The question is, you're, you're paying for the license, as opposed to if you buy right. a new computer, it's mm -hmm. there, it's installed. Right. You know, there's no labor. It's a matter of then stripping off all the junk. Although the business great machines don't usually have all the crud. Um, the most I really use this now because originally I was calling, dialing into yeah. it. Uh, Patty said that it was screwing up her system when she came in after I did that. So I stopped doing that. So basically all I'm using that laptop for right now is like when I'm working on budget stuff uh -huh. or something like that. I have, because I have my own computer at home set up with the treasurer's email on it. So okay. I don't usually have this one up okay. and running unless... You know, I need to bring it back and forth. But the trouble, but, so, the, but the problem is again getting to the security stuff. Well, if that's what I'm saying. If we don't need this, you know, then or if she just doesn't get on, like if when she's here, if she right. doesn't get on the network, then there's no vulnerability Correct. at least until we get to the point right. where we can replace that one. Well, is right. your what personal computer? About, does that go on the go, network? No, I don't what connect you're about that. Nine hundred like dollars to go to. I have. Yeah. So it sounds to me like we really need to have four computers. But can I ask I, something? I'm serious. It's why why can't the listers and the and the bookkeeper share one computer? Because they got to take it on site too. That's well, how are going to get about. two computers? When they, they don't need to take both on site. Well, let's find out how much they are. If yeah, let me let me do a little. I'll, I'll, if they're really that inexpensive, I think we're bickering about something that right. may not yeah. be that much money. When we're talking fifty one thousand from. A, yeah. a, a motor. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're talking five thousand for four well, computers. Right. That's Patty's not so horrible. Patty's computer doesn't need to be a laptop. No, right? That can be a nope. and, and desktops are cheaper, cheaper than, than laptops. Than laptop. right? It actually shouldn't be a laptop. Probably should. Yeah, yeah. Right. it shouldn't be. No, but I agree. Patty's. Oh yeah. But she's got an external monitor. She's got an external keyboard, which could be used then for the Lister's laptop. Yes. Okay. Um, right. And the second computer for the Lister's. Doesn't necessarily have to be a, a laptop. That could be they a, could have a regular. They could have a desktop yeah. and a laptop. Right. Yeah. And and they said I don't think they need quite as much capacity for their second. For the second one, no. Doesn't sound like it. And if you wanted to hold off a year on getting another laptop for like mm -hmm. me or whatever, I don't think like I can work off of what we've got. You know, I would just yeah. You're not going on the network, so don't, you don't, don't have any. No, so, at all. so you it's don't all. have any security issues. No. So we really don't. I only use so we it for spreadsheets and yeah. things like that when I'm doing the budget, which is all manually entered. Okay. So, and Dell doesn't Dell have some municipal program discount program? I believe they do. Yeah, yeah. I believe they do. Yeah. Because they've always had one for schools, and I think they have a yeah. a one for municipalities yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. Nice. Um, Let me go in and look and see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the other thing, they've, they've always had very, very good warranty service, you know, to the point where if something goes, you, you call them up and they will overnight a new computer to you and you send the other one back and they fix it and you know, stuff yeah. like that. But, you know, so they, they, they tend to be built fairly well. Um, but then again, if we're start dealing with these guys, you know, or RV, we've got support fairly close at hand. Oh, thank goodness we have you on our board. Let me get some yeah. What a help you are. But I like the idea of getting a proposal for the email. Yeah. Their best rec, and I don't, I don't want to have a lot of meetings. Just give us no. your best recommendation that's going to meet our needs and. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. I'll talk to him. Right. Moving on. But yeah, have a little take a look at that and see what he, what he thinks. Move approval. <laughs> no. 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 Turn oh, damn. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was... Sorry, Mary. <laughs> so I hope everybody had an opportunity to review this. Um, Peter, I still can't find. Well, I looked at that oh, service. I, can show you I still can't find story. where you are referring. Get, get to the long-term debt page. Yeah, that's what I was. What are you guys talking about? We're talking about the, the audit, audit, which oh, I did no. not bring my copy. If you oh, have a copy here. here. So this one was 29, no. this one's 23. I so yeah, I but see no it says idea. 23 right there. So that's oh, I'm looking over 20, here. See, they're two 23s, and I think they just copied the number, okay. and that's the wrong number. I was looking in these columns. No, I'm sorry. I didn't, explain it. I didn't explain it well enough. But and I'm go so this I just thought it doesn't just make this. It doesn't make sense to me that that number is the same as that yeah. number. Is no, the same. it should be right. the 29. That's the only okay. thing. Like I spent quite a bit of time going through that. It's the only foolish little thing I've I found. I kept going back looking Well, thank God, because I can't remember a thing when I looked at it. So, anyways, so you look at I it, need though? approval on I, this I, if we want. Yeah, it's as You know what? We haven't warned it. As much as I could. I no, warned it. On yeah, my life. You didn't but, warn yeah, no. Oh, it didn't have to. Kind of the way I went through so it. Yeah. Just, it. Can it wait till next? I, I do have action possible under Treasurer's report. No, well, we need action possible. It's Can't action we? possible. Amend agenda. Well, it's pretty late to it. It's in. nothing that isn't. It's just you're approving something that's written. Sure. Well, I mean, and we did have action possible into the treasurer's report, so I think mm -hmm. you can slip that there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. What is okay. it we're supposed to do? Except you have to approve it. Accept the audit. Accept the audit. Accept the audit. Is she going to come in? Is this Bonnie? Bonnie, she's willing to come in. Last year, you guys didn't want her to come in, but she's willing to come in if you want to come in. But. I mean, if we have time, I would love to have her come in just because I get, and I'm pretty good with numbers. I mean, I get the basics of all this stuff, but I get lost in the weeds in the middle too. of this thing. Me too. Me okay. too. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, I'm just telling you. I look, I, I look at the fund balances at the end. I look about how much money we had, how much money we spent. I don't know if we need to. Maybe we just don't even pay any attention to any of that stuff. Well, I mean, but all those reconciliations is, of all those different things, I look at them. I mean, them and I don't understand to, most of it either. Kind of and what is it that you don't understand? Maybe I can answer the question. I, and no questions are being asked. So well, because just, we don't understand it enough to ask the question. Well, here's, so what, here's, what, I would, here's so, what I would recommend. Okay. Here's what I would recommend. Let's do this. Let's not have her come, but let's allocate some time in our busy agenda to talk to you about the audit, and you're probably right. You can probably answer all well, that. Well, but I mean, if you, I'm not trying to talk her out of coming. We're more than happy to have her come, but it's like I asked if there was questions, and I got no response yeah. other yeah. than Peter. The and only it's the, like the, the, now we're sitting here trying to I, approve. I it. just since since all the changes, and we're about to have another year where they're changing all the rules and the formats and everything, you know. You mean I've the, been a little lost in the, in the way they present right. these financial statements okay. and, the, and the different exhibits. So do you want to discuss with her how this could be changed? Yeah, I don't mm -hmm. think it can be changed. I think that's, I think it is what it is. I, I just, I really want, want to understand it. I think it's important. I right. want to understand I, I it totally too. I totally agree. But so let's try I this. Mean, Let's How about if she made a presentation? Out. Sometimes when you hear people talking about things and they go to a specific exhibit okay. or, a, or a, a graph, then you have the questions. Here's, when you're reading it, you can't even fathom what to ask. Mary, here's what, here's what I would recommend. Okay. We have a financial expert here. No, you don't have a financial expert. Yes, we do. As far as I'm concerned, you're our okay. expert. I think Dorinda can probably go a long way towards answering any of my questions. So what I'm suggesting is we go through the thing quickly, page by page. It won't take us that long, half an hour, 45 minutes, and see if that satisfies us all. If it doesn't, we can always have money. Can we have a paper well, cup? I, tonight. Don't, I don't want no. to. Tonight? No, not no. tonight. No, not tonight. I don't want to approve <laughs> this. I don't everybody. want you to approve this if without me being able to answer the question. Well, let's put so it on the agenda for next. let's put Bonnie in here then, and yeah. let her why don't we? It. Why don't we do it at the next I just, meeting? I just want to say one thing about having Bonnie in here. I've listened to a lot of accountants come in and present audits. She's bad. And they do it zim, zam, bum in about 20 minutes. They say, you know, here are the key, here are the key mm -hmm. pay, blah, blah, blah. I can understand those pages. 
That's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> looking for. Well, maybe maybe Dorinda could be the one to explain. Well, I would tell you, I thought Bonnie did not give as good a presentation as Bill Yacoboni did. No. She was like 50%. But, I, but I, thought, I, I thought part of our reason for not having her last year is we didn't think her presentation was great the previous year and we didn't get a lot out of it. Right. I, I mean, you know, you know, it's to me, it's here's what we budgeted, here's what we spent, here's the taxes we raised, here's the taxes we expected to raise, here's where our fund balance was at the beginning of the year, here's where it is at the end of the year, this is where our fund balances are. I can see that in that report. Yeah. So... And then the only other Maybe thing that I always it. look for, are there any material weaknesses? Right, in, correct. In, and she, and found, any. she found no weaknesses. No, no. no. Right. The only thing we asked her to change was one verbiage here about, and it hasn't been changed because um, it was how she stated a statement about the fund balance that it says of this amount, um, that we had a general fund balance of $86,312 surplus. We're asking her to remove the word surplus because we don't want it perceived that we actually had a surplus right. at the end Good. of the yeah. year yeah. because we actually had a loss. Right. Right. Um, right. And we think that surplus would be you know, a misstatement. Yeah, so I that's the only thing we've yeah. asked them yeah her to do, but, and I will ask her now to review that. I just couldn't find it on there, what you were referring to. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't no, explain no, it very fine. well. Yeah. Um, and so, but that was the only thing we could find in it, but like you said, without any, yeah. she found so would you send no problems. Yeah. Yeah. No, like if there's no weaknesses, then you're doing what you're supposed like, to do. Right. Right. As far as I'm concerned, that's, that's why you have an audit. Well, that's right. right. Yeah. We don't out. have to be audited. No, that's why no, we're all one of them. Yeah. So. Okay. So, so I don't have any other questions. I'm good. I'm good. I think we should do it on the 19th, and I don't care if we do it with Bonnie or with Dorinda, so we can save some money if we do it with Dorinda. I should. Probably is not charging us anymore. I don't it's think she that's part of your. It's a flat fee, fee to do oh. your audit. So, so, do you want her to come? And I don't know if she's going to be available on the nineteenth. Well, well, good. well good. I say, I say, we try it with the render first, and if everybody's happy, me too. Yeah, fine. we go for it, and if we need Bonnie, she can come. Sure. Can I just get a raise of hands of who needs printed copies mailed to them? Uh, there's a PDF on the email. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, what are you going to do? You're going to read it on on the computer? I, I don't need a mailed copy of paper. I just don't like to read stuff on the computer. I, I don't want to ruin my neck and shoulders. Yeah. And yeah, it does get hard. And I'm not going to read. I mean, it's I too read long. Thing. It's no. too boring. I don't like reading like this. I want to read. I mean, there's a lot of boilerplate in these things. That yeah, I know, reading. but well, I mean, and that's it. There's a lot of verbiage. Even it's just verbiage. Yeah. I, I, right. If you ask me what some of this verbiage means, I'm not going to be able to tell you. Which no, it isn't verbiage. Like it's it's, it's understanding numbers. some of those charts and how they relate to the other. Yeah. That's where I get a little lost. But anyway. I do so are we going to accept the audit tonight or not? Yeah. I say we accept it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Will someone make that motion? I'll move. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'm not opposed. Oh, okay. Did you vote, ma'am? I voted aye. I just had my hand up my nose. I didn't know if you were going up the chimney or what you, what you were doing. I thought if I did that, it would straighten it. <laughs> so you guys voted to accept the audit, but next, uh, the next meeting you would like to go over it with Dorinda. Yes. Correct. No action, just review. Mm -hmm. Bring up. Okay. Is that your report? Is that my, that's my report. That's, yeah. Hopefully we'll have some more financials for the next meeting, too. I mean, the good news is that that's exactly what we expected, too. There were no surprises mm -hmm. in there. No surprises saw, in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. That was the whole thing. That's why I thought it was... Yep. I move approval. October 15th, minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Uh, Somebody was a Review and approval of select board letter to Vermont Secretary of Human Services. Didn't we already do that? No. no. We talked we just about agreed to, it. We just agreed to hold. I thought we approved the letter, but we. No, no. I don't think so. Here, okay. All right. Here, could you, uh, Mary, you want to pass this around or somebody to sign the minutes? Thank you. So, you just. You, you, you prayed the. 
Thanks. They approved the concept of the letter, but you didn't approve the letter itself, per okay, se, as it. written. Got it. So if you, I have to go take care of a voter, so I'll be right back. I, I think it's yes. well written. It's My interesting. Mind, I I no, I didn't hear anyone. I didn't hear anyone come in. I'm going. I'll tell you, sometimes old age is a blessing. I can't hear anything. What? What? <laughs> yeah. What? What'd you say? <laughs> I thought it was fine. I mean. Yeah. I move we approve it. You're not going to write a letter. Let's read here. Yeah. Oh, well, I got it. I got it. I got it. Don't don't give me your cup here. I'll have multiple cups. <laughs> no, just have more paper. Doing the more paper. <laughs> well, anyway, I read it. I did too. Oh, I liked it. Yeah. Send it. Okay. It's a good letter. Did you write it? I wrote it all by myself. Well, so do we, do we need to sign it? Oh yes, please. Okay. Did we need to move it or not? We just. Well, you. <laughs> I love it. The state's only mass murderer. <laughs> hey! <laughs> I say, get him, get him between the eyes. All right. Brutal cleaver attack. <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at the second draft version of the novel. <laughs> I was say, just, just add this to your novel. <laughs> okay, now what? Um, you have correspondence, the uh, T.J. Donovan oh, yeah. The only other thing I would say is, isn't we only ask that it, we be kept apprised of the steps to relocate it, but don't we want to ask him not to put dangerous people in there anymore? I'm just saying. Let's just keep the letter. So, um, okay. you, guys, uh, you guys got the letter <laughs> yesterday from T.J. Donovan. Yeah. Yeah. I Liz, guess where'd you get that two hundred eighty-five dollars? I just went on the. They have a little link, and so it was two hundred eighty dollars that we'd get. How much? Two hundred eighty dollars. No, this was like if so. If you if we do the lawsuit and we or not whatever this, if we join this action, if we join this action, um, Washington County is you know they they estimate how much each county is going to get, and yeah. then you can break it down by town. And our town is two hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't even bother to go. Yeah, yeah I didn't bother. Well, I mean, well, we it's have... the principle of the thing. Is, I, yeah, yeah, I agree. We, we want should. to be involved. It's yeah, the I principle do. Of I the totally thing. And, and there are, you know, bigger communities that yeah, like have, Barry have is, had significant yes. problems. Yeah. That are, well, that's what I was yeah. going to say. Do, do we know if we have any problem in Middlesex? Well, no, I think it's more about, which was interesting because I hadn't thought about this. It's more about, like, the taxing of our emergency services kind of on, fair. like, accidents and calls to homes and things like that that like they are responding to more opiate overdose yep. they have to have training for opiate overdose mm -hmm. and all that and that comes at our expense right. yep 280 and i can tell you that our past squad has had to deal with yes. that have it okay yeah yep. well so then it should be joined yes so i think we should okay mm -hmm. do you guys want to uh, make a motion on that or yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. we um join we this we're moving that we Join the join class. Join well, we don't class. have to. We don't have or to do anything yeah, to join the class. Anything. We oh. sit on our hands. We're in yeah. the class. We don't. Oh, do we don't have to right. say. We don't do. We, we do. We have to opt out of it, or do we? I think if we want to really get out, out. We have to opt out. You yeah. have to opt out. So you're automatically. Uh, that's in. the way yeah. I read that letter. Yeah, yeah you're right. in you're unless right. we opt out. Yeah, I think you're right. So they're going to list all the towns that are one by one that are in the class. Well, the whole state is in the class. You would just opt out. I got you. And there's no real reason. That's, a, yeah, there's there's, no that's not as funny. I mean, unless you wanted to sue on your own because yeah, the you had a you would specific tax. Because if you were the city of Burlington and yeah. you had a $5 million yeah. bill, yeah. you'd want to go on your own. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Steve, quick question. You and Paul are going to put together numbers for our next meeting? Yes. Can you get those to Dorinda? On a draft basis, so it's she could plug them into her spreadsheet, so we can start to look at the we can do that. spreadsheet as a whole. That would be helpful. Really yeah. I know. I got it. I didn't even bring the spreadsheet from last time. I love it. Yes, we did. We discussed. I haven't passed out any spreadsheets. But, when but will you, you have the one town on the 15th, hall? Didn't, didn't the town. we have something on the 15th? Budget? Just, yeah. I think or was that just we talked about? was interviewing me about it today. Okay. I mean, I just, I am scared to death. 
I want to see where we are. As quick as well, possible. There's some numbers we don't just don't have. have. I know, I but mean, we can at least we can at least start to get an idea. And the other thing, the other thing we need to give real thought to is the, the dreaded raise issue, which is going to come at us like a giant snowball rolling downhill. So. Right. The sooner we have preliminary numbers, the more we can at least start to think about where we think we are. Wait, so it would be helpful to me to... I can already tell you the health insurance is what? 12%. Oh, God. It is? Mm -hmm. We got our... Hickok and Boardman got ours down to 5%. It was oh. going to be 15 Who, who and did they go through? I think well, we're still doing sick. Do you have any coverage? Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. No, but coverage. they really, they they really went to bat for really? us. Really? Yeah. Was, it was. But this is Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's published rates. You've yeah. got no yeah, see, they're, they're they're right. well, they're a really yeah. 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 That was the yeah. correspondence. That was, that was correspondence. I just want to say one really quick thing. So uh, we have a problem with this elevator light. And Middlesex Electric has said they don't understand how it works. Talk to Cindy about it. She said it used to be that you open the, the outside door and the light would go on. We have found no switch. There is no switch. I called Albie Bourne today and he said, oh, no, that is an elevator. That is a light in an elevator shaft. And that's union work and that's special, highly, that's highly specified electricity. Oh, God. Is that true? I just need yeah, some help here. Yeah, it probably is true. Elevator, you can't touch an elevator. You know, yeah, as a regular what, you type person, you can't touch anything worker. to do That's with an elevator. That's what he elevator. said. Is it, is it, how is did you call this LB? So LB Bourne lives in Middlesex. So, so how do you find out union worker So electric. how do I find someone to fix that? Does anybody have an eye clue? Well, there's Vermont Elevator Company. I know that they seem to not be. They, so they, they not told me to call the electrician. Well, what about LB? I have a question for you. Electrician? Do we have... Manual wiring diagram, any information on in that elevator? I don't know. I have no idea. Because the wiring in that elevator well, is I, not complicated. It's not complicated. We had a, a, a professional a electrician worker. say he can figure it out. Wow. Why don't you call Middlesex Electric, get a second opinion, find out how you that is the one that did. They were the one. Born is? Yeah. No, Middle Albie Born is Albie Born. I, I called him because Middlesex Electric was like, beats us. Well, wait a second. Is Albie Born a union? Electrician? He He's doesn't. Like, no, it's, like it's like a special. It's like a special. You can't go into an you elevator. You have to be elevator certified. That's I don't it. think it's union. I think you have to have a special but certification to work on no. elevators. But, but I don't know if that refers call to the lighting. Call the night electric. Yeah, but it's all okay. it's all built into the electrical part Wendell? of the elevator. What about Wendell? Wendell's not. It's not though. No. No. It's it's a list. It's not. I don't think. No, 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 no. It's if the minute you say when you open the door the light goes on, that means it's tied in. To all the relay system and the control system oh, of the that makes elevator. Sense. That makes there sense. may be an off switch where you can turn it off. That makes sense. But it's all, I can guarantee you, it's all, because when the elevator runs, that light's supposed to be on. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not supposed to be off on with a switch. It's okay, supposed to so be on. I'm going to electric, call them and call Vermont Elevator and see if I can get somebody in there. It's going to be expensive. I would expensive. say Vermont Electric, they're a very large. We have to have a repair. Yeah. The other thing I would say, this is an ADHD thing. It's an ADHD. It's an ADHD. Yeah, it's an ADHD. It's an ADHD. It's a lawsuit, frankly. Right. We have a presidential election coming up in less than a year. I know. Well, I have Weight Watchers tomorrow night. That's even worse. Oh, we'll use the elevator? They can't use the elevator. You should just say it's broken. I'd leave a little light in there, a little flash. So, you know, oh, a yeah. lantern, a little <laughs> hanging lantern. <laughs> so I've seen. I would know like about this. Call, if, you can't, if they can't have you, call the state general services and buildings, and they okay. must have a person uh -huh. there That's who's going to know, because they got a zillion... Elevators, elevators right? Okay, right. Good somebody. idea, Mary. And, yeah. and I would bet that they're using Benoit. they're using probably Benoit Electric or maybe, maybe one of these. Okay. Yeah, but what I'm saying, let's 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 yeah. try Benoit. All right, thank you very much. If, your, none, if none of those work, try that. I will. Thank you very much for your high mind. I was at a loss, but at least so they just got an before answer. we end, um, for the oh yeah, what, when when are we meeting again? Are we in, in the nineteenth? Nineteenth. Nineteen. Okay. Um, just put a quick item on the agenda for me to give you just a little update with what's going on with CV Fiber. Okay. And then the other thing. They um, got a grant. <laughs> that well, we got one, but there's other uh, yeah. other stuff. Um, we really need to follow up on the fire department issue. Okay. Well, I agree with that. I agree. So. I have an answer to that. Hi. How are you, Peter? 
Do you have an answer to that? Oh, yes, yeah, she does. Um, I'd also like to ask about I, what we're doing with our. I do um, want. I, did, I do want to tell you that I did make some phone calls about that. I've been meaning to bring it up at prior ah. meetings. Can I just quickly say I'm not going to be at the meeting on Tuesday because I'm going to be in Oregon for a week for work. What Tuesday? You mean the, the next 19th. meeting? Okay. Is that all right? I mean, is, are, do we have enough people at quorum? Yeah. I'm going to be here. Yeah. Okay. We'll miss no, we don't want to interrupt your cocktail hour. I know. <laughs> well, wait a second. Three hours earlier, so she'll still be working. <laughs> all right, I'm still going to be working. She's still going to be at a meeting. It won't be the cocktail yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, what part of Oregon? Portland. Oh, that's a wow. fun place. Okay. I've never been. So never you been. guys asked me yeah. to uh, and yep. to deal with consultants. Okay. So I went to the Stowe Town Manager and decided to start with him because they were they spent thirty two thousand dollars on a consultant. Mm -hmm. Basically, for consultant for what? Fire to, fire to, fire to, to get Volunteer the fire, fire department. To get the fire to your department motivated, increase mm -hmm. participation and safety and training and all the other mm -hmm. things we want mm -hmm. our fire department to do. So Stowe he said out of that $32,000, the piece of advice they got was appoint a fire a member of the fire department to recruit, recruit just in charge of recruiting, and also uh, hire a full-time chief. They hired a full-time chief for $76,000. Hey, hold on. So, don't, don't run that through. But it's still, it's that's a much bigger... But wait a second, oh, right, and right. they hired... Yeah, but the price is going to be the same no yeah, matter your size. Well, I mean, is there no, yes, is there so, volunteer or is no, there? This is, so it's a volunteer fire department with a professional fire chief now for $76,000, which is a lot. That's before you even get that's the benefits. That's before benefits, benefits and everything. Right. Yeah. So, um, it's $150,000. But they're not their own entity, like our fire department. Right. Their fire department... Um, is kind of like a hybrid like ours and exactly like ours. It, yeah, that's right. They had to create, a, they had a municipal fire department. So it's a very different... Which ours uh, is not. Or, which ours is not. And but did they have to move from a, no, a they non already, they had, it, it they already had, was. They had already oh. had a municipal fire department. They just had a bunch of volunteers in like, the municipal fire department. Okay. It's like, like the conservation commission or, so, or the okay. zoning. Yeah. And this uh, professional fire chief is now responsible to them. But they have 3,160 calls a year. We have, on average, about 60. Oh, yeah. so it just wouldn't. Big, yeah. Yeah. You, wouldn't ha yeah. you wouldn't hire a professional. And you would not you hire. You might hire a professional, but it might not be full time. Right. It might be half time. Or it might, it might be, be third quarter, time. Quarter, right. So yeah. I see. I'd also talk to um, two other people who are involved in fire consulting, or were. They actually got out of the business yeah. because it's been so dead, you know. There's just no money to be made doing that. The company they used, that Stowe used, was out of New Hampshire and was called something like, you know, Municipal Research Inc. or something. He said the $32,000, he would not recommend spending $32,000 on this, especially since there's nothing we can do. Thank you for checking on all this. Well, you told me to. I know, but thank you. But uh, it's just, it's just there, are, there are dry resources. There just aren't that many resources. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then did you talk to any other volunteer fire departments, town people? It's, it is an endemic situation, what we have. It is just really, really classic. And it has to, a lot to do to, with the culture of a typical fire department, which is that it it's, can have a kind of like quasi-military mode. Like you come in, you have to prove yourself. You know, you're a grunt at the very beginning until you actually earn you're your stripes. Tortured. Yeah. And you're, people want to volunteer, but they don't want to. They have time. They have limited time, and they don't want to go through all this. That's uh, one particular problem. The other one that I thought was pretty interesting is that when people volunteer to work on fire departments, they want to do fire stuff. They don't want to recruit. They don't want to do paperwork. They don't want to fill out reports. They want to rush out there and put out fires or you know mm -hmm. whatever it is those guys do. So back to that, the you know you're you're now back into the exact same situation that you were, which is I have no idea what to do. It's just that the consultant I don't think is going to be the answer for you. Mm -hmm. What about um, so so in our budget? You know, I mean, even though so so what would it take for them to become a municipal fire department? You would have the It would have to go to the elect. I think so. Okay, uh, I absolutely think we would. But I, you know, I. But how do we I, have a volunteer fire department? Like I, logistically, you can still have a volunteer fire. department. No, I don't mean that. How do we have a nonprofit fire department that we have no say over, but we 
give them money and we support their budget? Like, oh, how does that could, work? We could cut off their budget. We own all the property. Okay, right. so own, that's what you could do. And we could lock them out the of the building. fire department and we could we could then create by vote of the public. Uh, right, which we're not going to do that. But that's that's just my question. That's, like, yeah. that's, that's, that's how do, this, but we can't yeah. control yeah. what's going to happen. It really does. When you, uh, you know, from talking to about two or three people who are involved in this, um, including a guy who does fire inspections for VLCT. He said, oh, yeah. the uh, that was that guy. Yeah. yeah, he actually came to the office. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, um, that, you know, it really, it's when you have a small fire department, it all hinges on one or two personalities. Yeah. And so yeah. it's a hard thing to just person. kind of let, it's kind of, you just can't, if you get one or two personalities, there's some places that have a dynamic fire chief and everybody falls in line. They're all, they have fundraisers and potluck dinners. Yeah. And I they, think out in Plainfield at Marshfield, they had guys Yeah, like so it there really was a guy depends. Tom McClay in Marshfield for years. You people can get yeah. adored, yeah. Right, and people, and there are fire, firefighters, chiefs around here people adore. I mean, just that is the difference. But I think that there's also a um, feeling of sort of us versus them in terms of select board versus the fire department. Mm -hmm. I think they feel like they are um, attacked every time they, like they're always on the defensive. And so I'm wondering if there's some sort of relationship building we can do with them at the very least that might be like, hey, we were thinking of, um, you know, doing something like a pancake breakfast or a, you know, you know, they, you know, they'll say, oh, well, we can't do coin drops because of blah, 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 it's too dangerous. Like, well, let's think of what we can do to like show some sort of, you know, give the town a, a, a different image. By the of way, them. the coin drop thing, I think, is a bad issue because Tunbridge does it both ways on the only road to Tunbridge Fair. And they always get permission from the state. Right, Route 110. Route right, 110. Whatever. I'm just saying, and I don't, we, I don't want to hear excuses. We could do it on the way down to the valley, not just people are going to Waterbury, which that's is what right. they always allege, but... That's one issue. So if we're not going to hire like a consultant, which totally makes sense, like what are the things that we can do that can help improve the image and let people see that the fire department might be something that they're interested in participating we in? We have to get the right person slash people. And unfortunately, I think what we have to do is support hiring a chief slash administrative person who will do the paperwork, do the bullshit, be responsible for recruiting, and earn a real and earn a real salary. But how do you do that when they're a nonprofit? We'd have to turn them into a municipality. Well I think no. there's a couple no, I mean, I I can, of ways. Can, I think there is too. Um, I mean one of them would be to simply go to them and, you know, ask her to sit down and say, we would very much like to establish a municipal fire department. And we'd like you to willingly give up your 501c3, and we'll proceed with that. You know, I, you know, the reaction to that might just be no, mm -hmm. which doesn't mean we still can't make that move to have uh, a municipal fire department. Um, and, and again, looking at this part-time chief, administrative piece, I think is possible, but, I just made a note to myself to go back and look at that, how you establish the, the municipal. Statute. And it could be, a, maybe we're able to do it. Huh? The statute that yeah, we there's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look it up. It. But you know, what What we don't want to do is have it be, because we don't, we, this isn't a threat. Like, I don't want no. it to be a threat. No. We want it to be something where we're working together because what we don't want to have happen is everyone says, well, no, we're not, we don't even want to be a part of this anymore. Well, I think we've been trying to work mm -hmm. with them yeah. for quite a while. Yeah. I also think there's no. But are we willing to risk everyone quitting? On us? People, as okay. far as I don't think any resident in town, other than the small report they get once a year, in the annual report, they know what they do and what they don't do down there. And well, and also the people who get harassed every week when they go to the concerts because that's the only thing they do for fundraising. They harass you to buy tickets. I wouldn't everything. call it harassing. I think so. Oh, this no. seems like he's mingling no. up there. He's like, it looks like he's having. This looks, that looks uh, amiable. Is sure. this over the gazebo? Yeah, yeah. 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 Every, call that. every, but it's usually several people. Yeah, but it's a 50 50. I don't think it's, I don't think that's bad. I, all I'm, all I'm suggesting is, I don't think we're going to get a lot of outside help on this. I think Probably we're going to have to figure this out ourselves. And, 
you know, one of the one of the things as an interim step I was thinking about, and you know, and this is the time to do it, is say, is say, look, we want to increase your budget by twenty-five thousand dollars. I don't know, thirty thousand dollars to hire a part-time administrative person to take the burden of all that stuff off of the volunteers and the second duty of that person is going to be to actively recruit new members and organize the training and make sure they get it and didn't you I don't have know. a secretary at one point? Was, that wasn't wasn't that I know that at some point you would encourage the fire department to hire like a secretary or an administrative assistant. We did have yeah, some. Yeah, but there's no money didn't. there's no money in their budget to do it though, Sarah. Okay. I mean I we did and, and we and we allocated some small amount of money in their budget to do it. But I mean to to get a so so let's say it's a ten hour a week person, a twenty five percent a twenty five percent person. What's that gonna cost? Fifteen thousand dollars? I don't know. You get somebody with real experience who's got. I mean, you got. There's got to be somebody. You can't just be some. Wait a second. What if we end up with one of the people who's there? We hiring. are hiring the person, so they can be part of it. Absolutely, be part of it. But, but if they come to us, if all of a sudden, if our all employee is, that's going to work for a volunteer organization, yeah, can we impose that? Is a good no, point. it's going to work for the town. But how can we impose that on them? It's a volunteer I, I, organization. I, 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 all I'm all I'm saying is, if I was down at that fire department and the town came to me and said, "Look, we want to make things better for you. We're not we're not we're not trying to take over control." We are trying to make things better for you, and the way we're going to do that is we we are going to support an administrative person who's going to be a town employee, part-time town employee. What if we specified that all the money that came in and we had this new person had to be decided by the new person that we're is a town employee? In other words, we give them thirty thousand dollars, and if we're going to have this person who's going to be doing this, I thing. think that's where you step in the uncharted waters. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, we we approve all the money anyway. I'm I'm just trying to think that's of right. a way to act like we're trying to help them without imposing our our will on them and right. abolishing their little boys club down right. there. Right. Yeah. But right. it it gets harder and harder to respond to a citizen by saying, well, they're their own entity. There's, there's nothing we can do about that. Well, see, I, I, I yeah. think... Uh, uh, Peter, I, mean, I think you're going to run into some legal issues here. I think you, you've got a nonprofit organization, and if you hire an employee, a town employee, who is to work for... It's like saying <clears throat> having a higher end town employee to work for the Boy Scouts. That doesn't. It doesn't. <coughs> you might. You might be better to actually bite the bullet and say we want to form a municipal fire department. Then you can hire well, whoever be, you want to hire. That money, might, but the so the is, question is, give them money. The now. question is, what's their? Which is the fire department budget? And remember, we had the. T we had the. We gave them about thirty-five thousand dollars, not counting plus service. Plus the stuff. plus the debt service. Yeah, and the that's about. I think it's about one hundred and sixty-five thousand a year. When you look at the history of the fire department, how this developed, it's a typical Vermont fire department, right? Yes, without that's the debt service okay. in there. How much um, is it? 62,000. Almost 63,000. 63? I always thought it was yeah. like without, without the debt service? Without debt service. Holy shit. Wow, I thought it went. It used to be they always come in and say, we want the same level of funding, and it always seemed to be 30,000. No, but it's, it's, well, you, it's got you know, the dispatch goes off. Oh, yeah, 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 the dispatch. Right, yeah. Oh yeah, so. well that but they always think they control about thirty five, thirty. And then yeah, the dispatch and stuff, they have that, but they never consider that part of their right, budget. Right. With that well service. they do. They put it into their presentation because they take that whole sixty thousand dollars and they use it as in their tax reporting. Well I remember they use that in their taxes. So they claim yeah. that all is a right. gift to yes, the fire right. department or something, a donation We're not, or whatever. Let's not go back yeah. to that. No, but I'm saying that. Yeah. So they do take it all in. Right. And then so when what's you the debt service to When you add the debt service, all that separated, stuff. I would have to. Oh. 
Oh. Yeah, but, it, but it's the bond for the fire but station. Where's our last year's okay. tax um, report? Because got it's got it in there. Well, I didn't. Well, I'm going to run out the tabulator pretty soon if you guys yeah. aren't ready. I didn't. I didn't mean to get us off on that for no, today. No, I think it's. Go, I think it's good. We need to keep. Yes. Well, I'm we glad you brought that. I've been meaning to bring that up. Yeah. yeah. I met with that guy. That guy was. It's just yeah. such a common problem. I mean, it is just. So there's no. We're probably what, talking about seventy-eight thousand dollars in debt service. Yeah. So we're seventy-eight. It's Mary. Seventy-eight and sixty-two. Well, so that's 140. 140. 140 added to 62. No, no, no 140, 140 total. total. That's including their debt service. But that's a that's a pretty good chunk of. That's money. Yeah, that is. That's real money. Wow. And I don't think to to cut to the other issue, and I haven't asked in a while. But I vaguely remember when I was talking to them in Montpelier to provide fire service for Middlesex, and that was eight or ten years ago, and it was a quarter of a million dollars. Oh, my yeah. God. Holy crap. <laughs> Did we ever talk to Waterbury? No. We'd have to have three towns, Worcester, Waterbury, and Middlesex. Although there are, because of the, the problem of getting volunteers, there's uh, a group up in the Northeast Kingdom that's creating a, a, regional. a regional, yeah. But the legislature started to do that. I mean, Patty Lewis was really involved in that, um, and, and it just went nowhere. From a legislative point of view. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They were trying to create a district with, like, Barry, Berlin, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. But if you had, you know, you had towns that were interested in doing it and did it on their own, they would create a fire district, Yeah. essentially. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So um, I want to be I want to be careful how I say this, and, and I've, I've said it many times in the past. You can probably hear it from me again. But you know, the, the the despite all these issues and all these problems, is we have as good rural fire protection in Middlesex as there is anywhere. But it's largely because of the mutual aid situation, mm -hmm. and thank God we have that. Yeah. And. If we get on the cusp of not having enough volunteers to be eligible, and I don't know what that, I've tried to figure out what that, if there was a firm line in the sand yeah. where all of a sudden you get dropped. But, you know, if you can't respond to a certain number of calls, they drop you. I mean, there, there, there are issues there. I am not aware that we have ever been on the cusp of having that happen. We did have a time when we didn't have a tanker, and that was a problem. You know, there's a guy who lives on uh, East Hill, and they, they're real, I think he's the one who's got the pond near the road. And I always heard he was a retired New York City fire, fire. Pond near the road. You know, it's up near um, Yvonne, Yvonne and, uh, you know, the house, Lou Whitaker's area, you know, all those yeah, houses yep, there. Yep, yep. The one pond by the road. Oh, the little, the little pond, yeah, the yeah, teeny yeah. little. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always thought oh. there was a firefighter. From New York City, who bought it? I'm just wondering if that's true and whether or not that person might want to get involved. I, I heard of uh, another person who apparently teaches for CCV and who's a retired chief um, and does, uh, you know, like the classes for recertification on certain things. Wow. I mean, might, so where's that person? I don't know. I'm sure it's not Paul Attenti? No. No, okay. Um, I can't remember the name, but I was going to follow up on that maybe. See if I can track him down. Hmm. So, but anyway, there must be some more firefighters in this neck of the woods that are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a thirty-two thousand dollar consultant for to, get, to get that for advice. We can. I already consider that we have the advice. <laughs> Forget the. Yeah. yeah, look at the money. Look yeah, at the we money. should save thirty-two grand. <laughs> I know the town manager was really helpful. He said, "Well, here, let me just tell you what he said." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the thing is, we have sixty a year, and they have three thousand a year. Yeah. Well, uh, they have all those. You know, they have hotels. They have yeah. Oh, mountains. Condos. It, yeah. Well, yeah. they have all kinds. Of, I mean, you think we have auto accidents that we were respond to. Imagine the mountain road on a snowy Sunday yeah, afternoon. They, they also that, have the tax base. Is, <laughs> is that oh, no, they do. <laughs> yeah, they do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but I, I mean, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't mean that we shouldn't look at, you know, that yeah. whole business again. I mean, maybe maybe Waterbury would would uh, I remember sure, I once went over to Berlin. Did you ever have a well, no, I I I didn't even mention it, but uh, he reached out to me again and said, "Hey, we need to get together." So, who's that? Your fire chief, Waterbury. Right. Well, so hopefully they just join there too, the village and the yeah, yes, yeah. yes. 
Well, hopefully he's not they saying we're about to ago, file a formal they? complaint they against your department. No. Or someone. No. He isn't, I'm sure, but anyway. Yeah. Whether we're I need to I need to reach back out to him. Yeah. Whether we do it in the meeting or not, I just want to get an update on what's happening on that zoning. Uh, we haven't met yet. We're due to meet very soon. Don't you have a deadline on when you have to get a decision yeah. out? Any other business? I think we're all exhausted. I know yeah. I am. Yeah. I feel like it could be 10 30. You, you want to move, want to move for adjournment? I want move for adjournment. <laughs> we don't have to do that. No, I know. I, know. <laughs> I just thought you'd like the satisfaction. <laughs> I want to go home and just look at my new tires. I don't know what I want to do. <laughs> tires, yeah. Okay, so uh, are, are there any other zoning things that we are up? Tires from Town Fair Tire. Yeah, for, all for yeah, yeah. In yeah. 17. Well, yeah, we actually got them in Rutland. Oh. We're coming back from Florida. Oh. So anyway. Um,